Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. Today, a world premiere, we're debuting the Ressence Type 5L. It is the latest introduction in the water-resistant and diveable Type 5 series that first bowed in 2015. So for 2024, we have some things that are new and some things that are fan favorites that carry over. What hasn't changed is the fit. Let's talk about it. Type 5L, grade 5 titanium case, albeit very spare, 46 millimeters in diameter diameter, but don't be afraid. It's only 51 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. In terms of thickness, 16.1 as I measure it, and then we have a spacing of 24 millimeters between the lugs. This watch is incredibly light. It's only 87 grams, despite the fact that it does have 37.5 milliliters of oil inside it, and it is a 46. So it's a 46 because it is functionally large. This is an instrument style watch. It's a diver. It's got to be visible. We'll move away from my wrist so you can get a good sense of the watch in proportion. While it's big, it's a very wearable watch. It's got a flank that ramps and allows a sleeve like a jacket cuff to flow over it. It's a little bit more subdued than some of the more colorful and exuberant Ressence watches. So this watch is perhaps a little bit more versatile than previous Ressence models and even previous Type 5s. You could see that on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, especially down the barrel, the lugs are not close to the edge of the wrist here. And then from over the top, which always exaggerates the width of the watch, the lugs are still inboard. So I could recommend this probably for a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. It wears surprisingly well on a small wrist. Now the watch will come with two different straps. So you've got this one right here. You've also got a rubber strap that comes with it. So if you want to swim with your Ressence strap, you can see this one has a backing in leather. You can put the other one on and be good to go. Now it's a high quality strap. You can see a combination of gray textile, signal, yellow calfskin on the bottom. We have a gusset sewn in in gray leather, so it's less likely to gouge, last longer. Benoit Mintians of Belgium is the founder of Ressence, and he is an industrial designer. He wanted to create a watch that was beautifully designed, innovative in its layout, and also very friendly and approachable. So you have the Ressence hand logo as symbolic of those ideas. And you can see a place for everything and everything in its place. There's even a little slot for the pin in the buckle. Beautifully designed. It has all the hallmarks of something designed by a person who does design for a living. Of course, designed in Belgium, made in Switzerland. This is a Swiss watch, so if you have any doubts, uh, let them be allayed right now. Taking a quick look at the dial side, because this is the first Ressence that can really submerge, the other ones have been 10 meters. This is 10 atmospheres. So you've got a legitimate 100 meter dive style watch. There is a unidirectional rotating uh, dive style bezel outboard, and that can be aligned with the minute hand, which is right here, in order to allow timing of your dive. Of course, the watch has the ability to set both forward and backwards, so you need some way to prevent the watch from moving in both directions when you are diving. Of course, a dive bezel is unidirectional, but if the minute hand can move backward, uh, you would reintroduce the problem of accidentally extending your time below. So here we have a locking mechanism. And this locking mechanism allows you to lock the case back, which is ordinarily used for setting. So when you go to setup, now the case back allows you to move freely. And of course, we have two movements in one case. We have the ETA base and then the Ressence ROCS, Ressence Orbital Convex System 5 here, which has 142 parts and 16 joules. It's a movement atop a movement. And I guess we should explain how this works because there is very nearly 40 milliliters, 37.5 milliliters of oil on the dial, you need to physically separate this part of the movement from the mechanical automatic winder inside. So there's a magnetic coupling between them. That's how you actually make the adjustments so that the oil can never pass from one half to the other. The other thing too is that because oil will expand and contract with temperature, there are seven bellows inside the watch to allow the oil to expand and contract. Now we've got a little temperature gauge right here that came over from the previous Type 3. And practically it's very difficult to get into the extremes of these ranges, but it's there for your peace of mind. Now we have what could be described as a regulator style dial, the ROCS features all of the elements rotating relative to their own axis, but also relative to the center of the dial. We have our minutes, we have our hours, we have something called the runner, avec de banane, 
Now we have these two bananas, as they call them. This is actually a system that rotates on a 90-second basis. So it makes a full circuit every 90 seconds. It's not a pure second sand because of that. It's moving a little slower, but it is there to let you know your watch is operating. So when I move the display, you can see it is in fact a regulator, but it's also a planetary and it's a system that is quite easy to use and approachable. You use the case back to wind and set the watch. It's unique in that it has no crown. So you can use the friction zones on the back to wind it, although it is automatic winding and you can see it does have a rotor that's visible from the back. And then you can also lock everything in place once it is set. You can still make fine adjustments when it's locked and that is intentional but they require a deliberate focused effort as opposed to just casually moving fore and aft when the system is unlocked for setup. So you have the ability to set it both ways. Let's do a loom shot because this watch is designed on a tool watch basis. It has to function as a diver and you can see the brightest grade of Super Luminova and in many respects it's more of a illumination by negative space. So the hollows without luminescence stand out in relief against the base. This is the most highly luminescent Ressence watch ever. And you can see not only have they used a lot of it in some of the brightest grades, but we also have a few different colors present here. Uh, you can also see that it's a heck of a lot of fun to set in the dark. And it's one of the few watches that you can set with absolute certainty, even in low light conditions. The watch is an absolute party animal. A lot of fun, ergonomic, a timepiece that you can wear with abandon this summer. It's a fantastic early summer release for that reason. And again, previous Ressence watches could not be submerged. This one can be down to 100 meters. A grade 5 titanium case, though you can see the titanium is very spare. There's just a sliver of it. Most of the case externally is sapphire, which means it's extremely scratch resistant. And this is almost acting as a blocker for any blows that might hit the watch. Automatic winding with a 4 hertz beat rate, a 36 hour power reserve, is a 2824 tractor base, and then there is the ROCS 5 with its 16 joules and 142 parts and oil bath on the top. People ask, are they maintenance intensive? Is it expensive? You gotta remember, two different movements. The top one is lubricated in its own oils. It is sealed. The bottom one is coupled to it by magnets only. So when you do a service here, it's really just an ETA 28242 service. The the module itself is sealed and does not require periodic upkeep, so it's actually as simple as can be from that standpoint. And yes, it is very reliable in the sense that every 28242 is very reliable and serviceable. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am T Masso at the 1916company.com. That's T Masso at the 1916company.com.